I'm going to tell you about detection and attribution of climatic changes, and I will focus on natural factors that play a role in climate evolution. What do we refer to when we talk about the climatic system? The climatic system is traditionally made of the atmosphere, the oceans, rivers, lakes, also referred to as hydrosphere, continental surfaces, lithosphere, the biosphere, i.e. the living part on the surface of the earth, in the oceans and on land. And finally, the fifth component is the cryosphere, the frozen part. These components have their own dynamics, they interact with each other, they exchange energy, they exchange water vapor, carbon, and because of these exchanges, the climate changes. This is what we call internal variability of the climate, because there are interactions connected with the internal variability of the climate. And the climate also will evolve based on external factors, such as solar variability, volcan activity, tectonic at a much, much longer time scale, obviously. And another factor, which is non-natural, human activities, which have an impact on the climate by changing the uh, chemical composition of the atmosphere with uh, greenhouse effect gases, uh, particles, aerosols, leading to an influence on the global climate and also changes in the uh, vegetal coverage of the earth, carbon and local climate changes due to the fact that uh, deforestation will decrease the humidity. And finally, human activities, activities have an impact on continental services by changing the uh, land use with irrigation or by uh, changing the rivers and the lakes with a local impact. Now, we're going to look at the climate evolution over the last 650,000 years, and we'll try and identify natural factors that have influenced the climate over this period. This graph, this picture shows you the black curve, a temperature recording made from uh, an ice core. There were warmer periods uh, alternating with colder periods. The uh, warmer periods are shown with a grey colon and they uh, were combined with interglacial periods. The glacial periods, the cold ones, showed temperatures uh, three to eight degrees lower than during the interglacial period. The uh, last glacial period was 21,000 years with a much different climate and temperature from uh, our period. The ice cap went down to Scotland and the level of the oceans was 130 meters lower than it is nowadays. So we see from the uh, ice cores, drilling cores, that uh, greenhouse effect gases, uh, nitrous oxide, uh, Methane in blue and CO2 have uh, evolved in time than that warm periods were usually associated with higher concentrations. But we also knew that the climate, know that the climate changes started changing, and this led to a change in the gas concentration. But there is also positive retroaction. When the gas concentration increases, this amplifies the warming phenomenon. And in this case, we talk about a positive retroaction. But what is the origin of the temperature evolution, the climate evolution? We know, for instance, that there is a connection in the alternating uh, phenomenon between glacial periods and interglacial periods, a change in the orbit. The cycle is about 100,000 years for a main period and 400,000 years for a secondary period. But we also have timescales of about 40,000 years that have to do with the change in inclination of the rotation axis of the Earth versus the rotation uh, plane of the Earth around the Sun, and also the uh, revolution cone that looks very much like uh, this kind of axis, introducing variability on a scale of about 20,000 years. We are aware with of where a fairly long period and variations. Now, closer to our time, the 20th century, but going back 1,000 years approximately, we see 
A recording or reconstruction of the average temperature on the northern in the northern hemisphere between 1,500 and 1,850. This results from reconstructions not based on direct measurements, but reconstructions based on paleoclimatic indicators, for instance, the thickness of uh, uh, tree rings and the number of tree rings. And we have here in gray the superimposed reconstruction. In pink, we see that the various reconstructions conver converge to give similar values. What it boils down to is that around the year 2000, there was uh, the medieval abnorm abnormal climatic uh, period with uh, warmer temperatures, followed by colder period, uh, the uh, small glacial age between 1,200 and 1,400. And then in the 20th century, we have a strong temperature increase. If we look at these uh, variations uh, century by century, we see that one cause could be solar variability. Take the top curve, the evolution of the intensity of solar variation starting in 1600. We see that there is a period around uh, 1750, uh, 1650, uh, 1750, Mondes minimum, very few solar spots with a lower sun activity explaining the lower temperatures uh, which were found during that period and recorded. At the end of the period, the solar variability becomes stable and then we have an 11 year cycle the temperature increased during this period, and we have to find a different explanation uh, to account for the temperature evolution during the 21st century. Based on this graph, we can also identify another natural source of uh, climate changes, volcano activity. Here we have uh, the Tangora volcano uh, eruption in April of 1815, leading to lower temperatures. The temperatures went down by about half a degree due to the fact that uh, gases were injected into the atmosphere, sulfur gases, which then combined with the uh, atmospheric vapor, forming small aerosol particles of sulfur acid, stopping part of the uh, solar rays and therefore cooling down the surface of the Earth. We see this in temperature recordings and it can be confirmed with uh, digital modeling showing that there is climatic impact uh, after a volcano eruption that can be felt for several years after the volcano eruption. In order to summarize natural influences, we have first of all uh, astronomic parameter variations over time scales in excess of 10,000 years, then we have variations in the energy released by the Sun that changes this climate over centuries or decades, and finally volcanic eruptions that will change the climate for a few years, two years for major eruptions such as the Pinatuba, but also for longer periods if there is a change in the frequency of the eruptions. Another source of variability, which is also natural, internal variability due to the interaction between the various components of the climate system, sometimes chaotic something that seems to be uh, random, but also variability modes that can be predicted, such as the El Nino phenomenon in the Pacific area.